In this question, we're given the graph of a line and asked to estimate and interpret the slope. So because we have the graph of the line, we can find the slope a couple ways. We could estimate the coordinates of two points on the line and then use the slope formula, where the slope is equal to the change of y divided by the change of x. But because we have the graph, we can also determine the slope by determining the vertical change divided by the horizontal change between two points. And this is why the slope is often referred to as the rise divided by the run. Let's begin by determining the coordinates of two convenient points. For example, this point here would have coordinates 100, 120. And for the second point, let's use this point here, which would have coordinates 50, 65. Of course, any two points would do, but notice how it's easier to estimate the coordinates of these two points. And now to find the slope graphically, we want to think about how we have to move vertically and horizontally to go from the point on the left to the point on the right. We'd have to go up this far and right this far. So because we're moving up, the vertical change is going to be positive, And because we're moving right, the horizontal change will also be positive. So the vertical change is going to be from 65 to 120, which is a change of 55. And again, because we're moving up, the vertical change is positive 55. And the horizontal change would be from 50 to 100. And again, because we're moving right, the change would be positive 50. Which means the slope, which again is equal to the vertical change divided by the horizontal change graphically, would be 55 divided by 50, which does simplify. There's a common factor of 5 here. We can also express the slope as 11 divided by 10, or as a decimal, 11 divided by 10 equals 1.1. A second method that we could use to find the slope would be to use this formula here, the change of y divided by the change of x. And let's also show this. So let's call these coordinates x sub 1 comma y sub 1, and these coordinates x sub 2 comma y sub 2. We know we're going to get the same slope, but let's go ahead and show it. We would have m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 would be 120 minus 65. x sub 2 minus x sub 1 would be 100 minus 50. So again, we still get 55 divided by 50, which does simplify to 11 tenths. Now let's interpret the slope. The slope is equal to, again, the vertical change is measuring the change in the gas bill in dollars, and the horizontal change is measuring the gas used in therms. So the meaning of the slope is the change in the gas bill in dollars divided by the change in the gas used, which is in therms. So let's rewrite the slope using the units. And we can use any form of the slope to understand the meaning. So using the slope of 55 fiftieths, we can say the slope m gives us the rate of $55 per 50 therms of gas. We can also say if the gas used increases by 50 therms, the cost will increase by $55. Using the slope of 11 tenths, this would give us the rate of $11 per 10 therms. We could also say that if the gas used increases by 10 therms, the gas bill will increase by $11. And then finally, using the slope in the form 1.1, this gives us the rate of $1.1 per one therm, or just per therm. Notice how if we formed a fraction using 1.1, we can always make the denominator 1, giving us the rate of $1.1, or $1.10 per therm, or per one therm. So now to express the meaning and complete the statement below, we can use any of these three slopes. And let's just go ahead and use the slope in this form here of $11 per 10 therms. So we can say if the gas used increases by 10 therms, 
then the gas bill increases by $11. So while the slope in any form does give us a rate, sometimes when interpreting the slope, it's often helpful to look at the denominator first because the denominator measures the change along the horizontal axis, which measures the change in the input, and the numerator measures the change along the vertical axis, which would be the change in the outputs. I hope you found this helpful.